All right, so now on to some more completely family-friendly content. Because I just finished this video with this cop who challenged this kid to a fight and didn't even arrest him after they fought, which is just some real dope stuff, man. So this is Carnival Scam Science. How to win. I have never in my life been able to consistently win carnival games and never in my life been able to afford to practice and holler at me if you're in the same situation. I can't afford to play this shit till I figure this shit out. This shit's expensive. And for whatever reason, I never once thought to look it up on YouTube to figure out how to win these goddamn carnival games. So, Chavez, Slovakia, that is what we are here to do today. So let's get it. This is by Mark Rober. And uh, I'm about to watch this shit. Let's see what you got to say. 11 feet. 11 feet. Oh, he actually It's no secret that carnivals exist to make shit. money. And to do that most effectively... That's in California. That's where me and Skitten went like three years ago on our vacation. Uh, we didn't go to the carnival, but we went to the beach out they there. They employ a bunch of little tricks to make you overestimate your chances of winning. In some cases, to such an extent that it's basically a scam. So I spent a couple days coming down to this amusement park and observing and collecting data on all of the carnival games. So today, I'm going to tell you which games are the biggest ripoffs. Let's do the it! scientific reasons why. I even answered your how much the carnival actually pays for the prizes that people can win. But there is hope because I'll also show you some legitimate tricks on how to win the most popular games. Okay. What happens when you show up to the carnival with your professional baseball playing buddy who happens to play for the New York Mets? <laughs> that's that's fucking hilarious. Hey. This is the one in California, right? I didn't go inside, so I don't know what it looks like inside. It just looks so familiar. Any kind of legitimate investigation needs to start with solid data as the foundation. Okay. So with the promise of unlimited churros, I had some friends uh, secretly uh, help me collect data unlimited on all churros. four carnival games for a full day. Not only did we capture how many times each game was played, but we also recorded how many times people actually won each game. Oh, the prize wow, won. that's so the first intense. So based on the data we collected is that this relatively small park collects $20,000 a day off their carnival games. Oh, what? So to help frame the rest of the observations, we'll... Uh, uh. Chavez Slovakia, I'm announcing the official uh, Chavez Slovakia carnival opening up. It's a $5 entrance fee, $60 per game. Come through uh, to my humble apartment and play whenever the fuck you feel like. Um, I'll make the games up when you get here. I only take cash, no credit, no PayPal. I'll see you here. Divide the games the into fuck? three groups. The first group, you've got the random chance games. Games like these, where no skill is involved and you're basically just rolling dice. Okay. For the second group, you have your skill based games like the basketball shot or the milk bottle throw or the basket toss game, where if you bring some kind of skill or strategy to the table, you can increase your chances of winning. And the final category are the games that are pretty much impossible. These ones, are borderline scams. There are three games in this category that lots of people attempted and nobody won. And if they did win, like in the case of the ladder climb, it was for a very specific reason, which I will address later. He was tall as fuck. So let's start by talking about the <laughs> He was just tall game. as hell. Calculating your chance of winning here is pretty straightforward. You just divide the winning outcomes by the total outcomes. Winning outcomes by percentage. total outcomes. So in this case, right. there are about 1,600 total cups <clears throat> and 160 winning cups. So that's a 10% chance. Right. One in 10 throws will win. There are a ton of games similar to this, but the catch is they always use balls that are lightweight and have a high coefficient of restitution, meaning that right. they bounce really well while they're high. This yeah. makes it much less likely the ball will end up where you originally aimed it. To illustrate this point, think how much easier this game would be with bean bags, which are heavier and don't bounce. With a ping pong ball, however, any imperfection bing, in the bing, game of your bing, original throw bing, is magnified, bing, bing. which <laughs> essentially randomizes things. Yeah. If you have no skills, these are the games that you want to play. But don't get too excited okay. because even there we go. Win, Wait, let's let's head there. After some investigative work, I uncovered the source where they ordered their prizes from. And so even if you got lucky and won on your first throw, it would cost you a dollar fifty for a prize that cost them forty-five cents. Jesus. But you usually don't get it on your first try. So treating this as an expected value problem in statistics, it would take you an average of five times to land it in a yellow cup. Right. Which means you pay seven dollars and fifty cents for something that cost them forty-five. What a great business strategy. Prize, what the fuck? In the super rare gold 
the cup, it's even worse. It would take you an average of 25 tries, which works out to $38 for something that costs I don't have that. six bucks. I don't have now that, bro. Added, the number of people we observed winning matched up pretty well with these statistical really? predictions. Now let's talk about the second group, That's impressive. which are the skill-based games. And one of the most popular in this category is the basketball. Basketball, yeah. 825 plays the day that we observed. My dad played this shit and kicked ass. It was so fucking, like back when, it was back when he used to lift weights and came back from deployment in the military. We went out to Circus Circus and he played the basketball out there. And I think he only missed like two shots out of the out of the uh, things that he got. So that's just a three pointer is 24 feet back. Yeah, on a rim that is 10 feet off the ground. But in this case, the line is 28 feet back on a rim that is 11 feet off the ground, which is subtle. But if you have a deadly three pointer locked in your muscle memory, you will tend to miss short, which is exactly what we saw a bunch. The reason they have the big slope tarp in front is so that someone can't stand directly underneath the rim where the height difference would be much more apparent here again, even if you go Steph Curry and drain your first $3 shot, you still right. lose because they only paid 80 cents for that basketball. <laughs> you need to overestimate your chances of winning by making subtle changes because the table is slanted up slightly. To right. reduce the horizontal velocity of the ball after the bounce. So even if you dominated this game all through college, your previous experience almost becomes a handicap. Right, this right. Your pitch speed game is borderline fraudulent as their radar gun registers about 15 miles an hour too slow. And I know this because I measured the distance and then recorded it in high speed and counted the frames. This pitch wow. was at 69 miles per hour, but it's much closer to 84. For the milk bottle game, the only catch here is the bottles are metal and therefore heavier and more stable and harder to knock down than a typical bottle of that size. I've seen some carnivals though where these are bottom weighted, which would yeah. make them more steady and thus less likely to tip. Yeah, I've seen that. You have, you can ask to hold it, and the point at which it balances on your finger is the center of mass. The key to winning this game is hitting them right here with a hard enough throw to introduce sufficient kinetic energy. But don't that sounded really fancy, I like don't that. Don't throw it too hard <laughs> because we noticed those who threw their hardest usually sacrificed on accuracy. About one in 14 people knocked this over on their first try. And then finally we have the basket toss game. And the key here is to have your first bounce hit on this front lip to reduce the kinetic energy enough that it won't bounce back out. About one in 10 throws will win on this game according to our observations. And now this brings us to the final category okay. of the near impossible games. Okay. And there are three of them. On this first one, the goal is to shoot out this red star completely with this automatic BB gun. So the best oh, those are is to fun, though. shoot a circle around the star to cut it out. Not only are the guns not accurate or precise, but the bigger issue is that you start out doing really well because there's enough surrounding paper for the BB to easily rip through like this. But Newton's third law tells us that you can only push on something as hard as it can resist your push. So at the end, you have these barely supported pieces of the star oh, that just that move just, out of yeah, the way the BB when you comes shoot without them. building up enough stress to rip the paper. Right. Like 120 plays, we saw nobody win this what? game. Wow! Uh, the spring bottle game is also impossibly difficult. Again, it's a lightweight object. I've actually seen really somebody win this. To encourage randomness, but the actual inner diameter could have been rigged. Is really close <laughs> but to the I saw somebody win. The bottle. This means that the San Gennaro Festival. This pretty much perfect one will send the ring bouncing away without settling in on the bottle. If you really want this pair, <clears throat> I suggest going on Amazon and getting it for forty-seven dollars. I literally can't tell you how much money this will save you because of the eight hundred and forty rings we saw thrown, none stayed on the bottle. That's Which crazy. Up sort of an obvious rule of thumb. If you want the feeling of winning a game, do not stop at any booth that offers really big prizes. Oh. And for the final near possible okay. game, let me reiterate that as a carnival owner, the most lucrative games are those which the customers overestimate their chances of success. Right. No game is a better example of that than the ladder climb. There's a subtle issue with this game that I think people realize, but don't internalize the significance. The ladder converges to be supported on the wall at one point instead of two. Right. If it was attached at two points, it's like like crawling across a rope bridge, right. which is pretty easy. Let's pretend this is you, and if you shrunk all the weight of your body down to the average location, we call that spot the center of mass, which we'll mark with this dot. And once again, we can double check this is the right spot because it balances perfectly on one finger. Right. If you draw imaginary lines connecting the different support points, that creates an area, and as long as your center of mass dot is within that area, it's impossible to fall off. <laughs> oh, but as soon as your okay. center of mass dot is even a little bit outside right. of the area of supports, you start to rotate and fall <clears> off. 
And this is true no matter which way you orient it. If you've ever bent over to pick something up, you actually know this fact, whether you realize it or not. In this case, the region of support is between the back of your heels and the tips of your toes. When you reach over, you will naturally move your butt back to right. keep your center of mass in between those support points. Right. And if you don't believe it, try picking something up while standing against the wall so you can't move your butt back. At the very moment your center of mass gets beyond your toes, you start to tip over. In the case of the ladder, Unless you're super flexible, I'll let you boy. I'm just kidding. You're only I'm just connected kidding. at one point. I'm just kidding. So even though it looks wide because the ladder runs, that area of support <coughs> reduces down to a line. So if you don't keep your center of mass directly above that line, you will start to rotate and fall off. In right. other words, to win this game, you basically need to be able to crawl across a tight rope. And you might think, well, I can do a slack line, so I can do this. The slack line is actually much easier for two reasons. You can flail your arms and legs out to adjust your center of mass to keep it directly above that line of support. Right. And your center of mass is higher, increasing your mass moment. <clears> Never done a slack line, that's terrifying. Stable. In the same way, By it's easier way. to balance this umbrella when it's extended versus when it's collapsed. So while there are a few videos that say tricks like maintain three points of contact, they're all basically useless because keeping your center of mass directly above a line is just something you have to get a feel for that takes a lot of practice. Right. But once you've had enough practice, this is the one game at the carnival that's basically all skill. So you can win every time and clean them out. Unfortunately, the carnival owners know this, which is why it's also the only game with this super link caveat. <laughs> so now that we're carnival experts, I called my buddy Matt Winokur, who was recently distracted to play baseball for the New York Mets, to maximize our chances of winning any skill game that had to do with throwing. This nigga over here <laughs> slaying shit. And he's a lefty. Bro, give me all your shit. I want it all. <laughs> so clearly Matt had a deadly lock on any throwing game. But basketball is more hey! like Today, I decided I would bring his ego back into check. But as it turns out, if you are a world-class athlete in one sport, you are a really, really good athlete <laughs> in all sports. So in conclusion, you should play the games if you think they're fun. Just know the odds are heavily stacked against you, so if you lose, it's NBD. Unlike this guy, who lost his entire life savings playing carnival games. So what motivation the is to gain the love and Poor admiration man. of someone special via a stuffed animal like this. You don't need carnival games to do that. Amazon yes, you do. Totally just no, it doesn't. I just bought this for you, my lady. No. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work. You have to take them to the carnival and show them that you are an alpha male that can dominate carnival games. Fuck you, Timmy. You just you steal the ball from that child and you throw and knock down those pins. That was so interesting to me. It basically told me everything I already knew about carnival games. They are really, really, really hard to win. And uh, don't feel bad for not winning them. And that makes me feel better. I'm going to save up a lot of money and we're going to go to a carnival. And I'm going to waste it all on cheap prizes. I'll see you later, Chavez Slovakia. Shout out to Mark. Make sure you go check out his, this video on his channel. I know there's a lot of you guys who actually still do that. We watch it on their channel first and watch my reaction, which I appreciate. And I'll see you guys around. Uh, shout out to the patrons. You guys' shirt should be there sooner than later. If you don't receive them, let me know. Um, but that should be on the way by now. Now, I'll see you guys around. Peace. Crocs, 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 Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. Wearing Crocs, boy. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. I'm rocking Crocs. Wearing Crocs, boy. My Crocs are gold. My pops is old. My Crocs got soul. My Crocs are bold. I go to church. Wearing Crocs. I'm always turned. Wearing Crocs. My Crocs are great. Your Crocs are lame. With my Crocs, I can cross a lake. Crocs, 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 